The first phase of the SEVA project has come to the end. The project, supported with a grant of over 3 billion Uganda shillings from Bill Gates and Melinda Foundation, was designed to scale up and integrate all the benefits of the VSLAs to offer a more holistic economic package to the vulnerable communities. The four-year project has been implemented in 21 districts, seven in eastern Uganda, eight in southwestern Uganda, five in western Uganda, and in Kampala. The project focused on five strategic directions. Village Saving and Loan Association, VSLA in short, is a financial inclusion model that focuses on empowering the vulnerable poor people to generate incomes through weekly contributions and to grow their fund through on lending their accumulated savings. The model also has a social fund component which helps members to solve any abrupt social problems. The community members embraced the VSLA scheme and started saving. And by the end of this phase, over 200,000 members have been mobilized in over 7,000 groups. They have pooled a cumulative saving value of nearly 20 billion Uganda shillings, an equivalent of nearly 8.5 million US dollars, meaning that the average saving for each member has risen from zero up to 145,000 Uganda shillings, an equivalent of 60 US dollars. The members have also been able to raise a total of 6 billion Uganda shillings, an equivalent of 2.6 million US dollars, through their savings and loaning activities with a portfolio utilization rate standing at 83% and the portfolio at risk at a mere 0.3%. As the VSLA groups started accumulating lots of money, the challenge of how to use it started cropping in. So, in the SEVA project, one of the critical ingredients was the simplified training package called Selection Planning and Management of Income Generating Activities, SPM, to equip the VSLA members with the capabilities to identify, start, and effectively manage their choice business enterprises. A total of over 26,000 people amongst them, 17,000 females and 9,000 males, have been given enterprise skills training programs to help them to select the business enterprises from an informed perspective. Mr. Turu Kennedy is one of the beneficiaries of the SPM training in Ichibari district. Because his village is not yet connected to the power grid, he identified phone charging as the most appropriate business to attract a daily income right where he resides in Kaisokero village in Chenzige sub-county. So he bought a solar panel and tap solar energy for charging the phones. But in Nakon in Chajinga, a semi cum, but a semi in charging a singing with an. On average, I charge 10 phones daily for 500 shillings each, so I'm assured of 35,000 shillings every week. With that, I can ably educate my children and also meet most of my family needs. Actually, this business is very profitable because, on top of generating money, it helps me to save what I would otherwise spend. For example, I no longer buy paraffin. I use the solar energy for lighting. Even members who had already started income generating activities acquired skill to manage them better to maximize the profits. The social fund component of the VSLA was very useful as insurance but could only solve minor problems. For issues that needed more than 10,000 shillings, the maximum any member can borrow from the group at a time, the SEVAP project initiated a micro-insurance scheme where members would get an insurance cover to redeem them at the time of need. The pilot was on the life insurance in case a client lost a close relative which would require a lot more money. So, during the past one year, Care International, in partnership with APA Insurance, worked with 16 VSLAs in Tororo District to pilot the insurance scheme. They are always buying the premium at 6,000. Now that 6,000 will cater for four children, and then that woman 
and the husband for the period of 12, 12 months. So far, we have paid around the 10 claims. Two elderly people, and then the rest, the eight, the eight were children. A total of 937 people enrolled for the funeral insurance with premiums worth 14 million shillings bought. The Save Up project has continued to serve the excluded persons. In Kampala, Care International partnered with Reach Out Mbuya, a non-government organization caring for the vulnerable community members, including those affected and infected with HIV AIDS. Reach Out embraced the VSLA scheme as a tool that would help their clients to mobilize funds, access and invest the funds into their income generating enterprises so that they can get the much needed finances to support their livelihoods. I was helpless. I didn't have any work. Good enough that by that time there was still world food in the country and reach out really helped us a lot that he, they were giving me this world food which was posho, beans and some others like cooking oil. But I couldn't eat only that, that beans and help me because we were told to take some other, other food which could help our body to, to build very fast. But I didn't have money to buy all that thing by that time. It wasn't easy for me. I started making this paper bit work, which has helped me a bit. At least I could change diet now. But at times when I get some order for the bits, I could not meet the order because I didn't have enough capital for making some more bits. Until when time came and they introduced for us the system of village saving. It was really good. It has helped us. Because I was now able to meet the order of my customer, so I was getting a lot of money out of my paper bits. And with my medication, I can now afford to buy the drugs. Like I developed goiter sometimes back, but time came when they wanted me to go for the operation, which needs like 2.5 million. So now I'm expecting that this third round, when we share out our money, I'll be able to meet the operation and pay the bill. So it is helping me a lot. It has brought me from nowhere. Now I'm somewhere, I call myself a woman and people really give me now respect. A total of 5,178 urban poor, including 1,812 males and 3,366 females, have participated in the VSLA with accumulated savings of 789 million Uganda shillings and loans outstanding worth nearly 287 million Uganda shillings. To ensure sustainability of the VSLA methodology even beyond the project lifespan, the Save Up project has been grooming a technical community-based team with the capability to train and oversee all VSLA activities when the project finally comes to an end. Uh, the criteria of selecting the, the VH agents, uh, first of all, we are supposed to be a member of a VSLA and which has graduated, and a member who has been active in the group and has grasped at least the methodology and how it works. Then uh, beyond that, we go ahead to vet the VA within the community. He must be a respected person, uh, trustworthy, so that he's able to help the communities uh, form groups and not go there to get instead the, the funds which they have accumulated. Then after that, we train them so we actually uh, put them into a position that they are able now to train the, the adult people in the community. Under this village agent scheme, we are able to reach members beyond the initial project implementation areas. I have so far trained 15 groups and many more are inviting me to train them. The training service is demand-driven, and therefore, these village agents reach out to all the interested group members and train them at an affordable fee agreed upon by the two parties. For example, in Chibari district, each member is supposed to pay 200 shillings every time the village agent comes for training. <laughs> 
We agreed to pay that money because that is what all members could afford. The training is very useful and the trainer has continued to guide us whenever need arise. In addition, the members pay 3,800 shillings each for the toolkit required for their saving activities. The 492 village agents have been able to organize 71,852 members into 2,554 VSLAs, thus contributing 32% and 35% of the total results, respectively. Overall, the project has made a significant and sustainable contribution to poverty reduction in Uganda. 26,000 members have been equipped with enterprise skills and over 200,000 members are now living above the poverty line after realizing 32% returns on their savings. This confirms that VSLA is a suitable financial inclusion model that when integrated with enterprise skills, deliberate targeting of excluded persons easily boosts people's livelihoods in a more holistic manner and at an average cost of 13 US dollars per client. So it is possible to change the livelihoods of the vulnerable communities using the little financial and human resources within their reach. This project has been about harnessing what people have, the capacities that people in communities have. Our role has been to bring technical support which helps people work together to learn the disciplines of saving, the disciplines of planned expenditure, and also communal work together. We have also been able to support uh, those groups to be able to become self-sustaining, to learn basic financial literacy, and to support government where perhaps it may not have been able to reach either due to lack of availability of funding or technical skills or whatever. As government, we started savings and credit institutions to tap the unbankables. But even with the circles at the districts, at the town councils, there still remain some groups down there. So it's nice that CARE has also reinforced government programs, government efforts, Tap those others who have not joined the other circles. I take this opportunity, therefore, to invite banks and other financial institutions to take advantage of these informal savings groups because they catalyze production. They also enable market access and increase household incomes. These three pillars are very, very important. This will not only increase the rural household's income, but will also make a significant contribution to the national income per capita, and hence the economic transformation of Uganda. On behalf of government, and on my own behalf, we shall continue providing the policy framework and a conducive environment for your development work as partners in promoting prosperity for all. We have already finished with the policy on this kind of activity. We are now moving to regulation because the regulators we had were the Bank of Uganda. And the Bank of Uganda only regulated certain institutions, these big commercial banks, deposit-taking institutions, and others. We are now moving down there so that we avoid conflict, so that we promote these institutions in a transparency and that, that there is no fraud and there is success in all that we do.